Good evening, everyone. My name is Stephanie Bishke, and I am the event specialist at the Rutgers University Alumni Association. I want to thank you all for being with us today. Today, I'm pleased to welcome you to a radical Wikipedia editing workshop led by artist Heather Hart, Mason Grove School of the Arts alumna and lecturer, and renowned interdisciplinary artist Wanda Raimondi Ortiz, Associate Professor of Studio Art at the University of Central Florida. After receiving her undergraduate degree from Cornish College of the Arts, Heather received her MFA from Mason Girls School of the Arts. Heather's work has been exhibited in sculpture parks and museums all around the country, including at Storm King Art Center in New York and Seattle Art Museum's Olympic Sculpture Park. In addition, she has participated in multiple prestigious residencies and received support from organizations such as the Joan Mitchell Foundation's Painters and Sculptors Grant. Black Lunch Table, the project she co-founded, which works to fill gaps in the documentation of contemporary art history, has received grants from many notable organizations, including the Andy Warhol Foundation of Art and the Wikimedia Foundation. She currently lives and works in Brooklyn, New York. Wando Raimundi Ortiz is a graduate of the Fashion Institute of Technology and received her MFA from Mason Gross School of the Arts. Wando's early work focused on pop culture, hip hop, and comic culture. However, her most notable work is interdisciplinary, performance based or interactive, and works to navigate the complexities of Latini Dad, violence against Black and Brown bodies, and radical empathy through her creative research activities. This work has been exhibited in many museums, including the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C., and the Museum of Contemporary Art in North Miami. If you have any questions for our presenters, please submit them in the Q&A box at the bottom right of your screen. We will do our best to accommodate as many questions as possible. For your convenience, this presentation is being recorded and will be posted to the RUAA YouTube channel. Following this event, you will receive an email with the link to the channel. It's now my, my pleasure to turn it over to Heather and Wanda. Hey, Heather. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, joining. I'm so excited to be here. I'm honored uh, to be virtually on Rutgers campus. Or, I mean, hey, kind of ish. Um, and to be here to, um, to just give a huge thumbs up and a big shout out to uh, my colleague, but my dear friend, Heather Hart, um, and my fellow Rutgers alum. She was just a few doors down in, in the studios right next next door to mine. And that was so exciting to have um, have been able to have been witness to the very beginning of the Black Lunch Table. Um, it was a scrappy little project in the very beginning. Um, we're talking about a couple of people, different cities, glitchy Skype, um, but the fact that we're here now uh, to to participate in this workshop and then the fact that the black lunch table has gone from that scrappy little project of a couple of people sitting on the floor in studios with like, you know, again, glitchy Skype trying so hard to connect with each other. And the fact that it's this award winning um, recognized project uh, speaks as much to the resilience of um, of Heather and her collaborator, Gina as the notion of needing to connect, needing to be in a conversation with each other's people of color um, and finding by any means necessary, however you're gonna, um, however, whatever you gotta do to connect, you're gonna do it, right? And so, Heather, thank you so much for inviting me to be here to kind of join you for a couple of minutes before you do your thing. Thank, thank you so much, Wanda. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's, it's great to have you introduce me. Um, I'm really grateful for that and miss you much. <laughs> I feel like everything is all over the world, just like um, what lunch table is now. But mm. um, thank you to Stephanie too. And Eliza is in the chat um, answering quick questions that you might have along the way. Um, yeah, I really appreciate he being here today and I appreciate the Alumni Association for inviting me. Um, Let's see, I'm going to try starting this. <laughs> um, so this is my work. Um, most African Americans are descended from people who had no physical space of their own when they landed on this continent. Um, these people kept an oral tradition of storytelling alive to maintain their culture, claiming a non-physical space of their own. 
this oral tradition a liminal space seeds my work. I'm interested in the enigmatic nature of forms that exist simultaneously inside and outside, private and public, between safety and chance, uh, between the minimal and the handmade, between spiritual and natural. These in-between spaces reflect the complicated nature of understanding the self and each other. And the content of my sculptures may transform depending on who experiences it and their perception, which is what happens to legends and oral histories when they're handed down. This is my uh, inspiration, <laughs> the son of my collaborator, Gina Valentine. Um, it's her little dude. She's an artist, writer, professor, and mother. Um, the maternal desire to cultivate the best possible world for her son spills into her practice. Uh, her recent work was inspired by her inability to empathize with mothers who've lost their children to police violence. Reaching the limit of what's comprehensible, the words in most newspapers accounts becomes um, pure form. In all her works, new inquiries are catalyzed by a meditation on her subjective experience of a common sentiment. What's her connection to the current zeitgeist? What's left unsaid? The inscrutable residue in the space between words. Her project's origin are pretty personal, but tied to popular narratives. She likes to do rambling, extensive rabbit hole diving research. She likes to theorize about, let me just go back, sorry. Um, theorize about archive language, memory, and identity. She's drawn to information that's esoteric and she makes paper eating ink. Our individual practices inter intersect with a number of mutual interests, storytelling, production of prom and promotion of legacies and, the co and conducting social experiments. We met in 2005 at Skowhegan Painting, School of Painting and Sculpture, where we collaborated on the first staging of the Black Lunch Table. Since then, our project has taken a many forms, including salons, co-teaching workshops. This is the Skype video chat that Wanda mentioned. I think her sh shoulder is in the center of the screen. Um, and co-teaching workshops and social meetups. The Black Lunch Table's primary aim is the production of discursive sites wherein cultural producers engage in a dialogue on a variety of critical issues. Through these events, we seek to mobilize a democratic rewriting of contemporary cultural history by animating discourse around and among the people living that history. Authoring the dominant cultural history, authoring the dominant historical narrative means determining who is other and the terms by which they are treated as such. The Black Lunch Table is a critical gesture to di disrupt that narrative. The significance of Black Lunch Tables and lunchrooms is specific to those who choose to participate in its formation and to those whom it necessarily excludes. Their existence within otherwise public spaces are marked as, marks a self-segregation residual of our country's history of sanctioned segregation. Organized around literal and metaphorical lunch tables, our project takes its phenomena, this phenomena as its starting point. Whether or not you've sat at a black lunch table, its formation is universally recognized. And so the space we name the black lunch table is immediately bounded up with those associations. Our project consists of roundtable sessions, Wikipedia edit-a-thons, an online and an online oral history archive. The roundtable sessions provide both physical space and allotted time for interdisciplinary and intergenerational discussions, bringing together a diversity of common members and fostering candid conversations. Participants are provided with conversations prompts, conversation prompts, and the audio recorded at each table will be added to our online archive. Unlike other oral history projects that seek to address historical omissions, Black Lunch Table catalyzes and documents groups of conversations, centering discourse around we, not me. At the artist table, our founding initiative 
we curate cultural producers of the African diaspora into roundtable discussions, providing space to discuss the critical issues, strengthens bonds within our nebulous community and validate shared concerns through the exchange. The event format is based around storytelling that, and participants engage in critical conversations relevant to discussions of art by black artists. By generating a dialogue among artists of the African diaspora in partnership with institutions of record, we are highlighting contingency in the art world already in play. By involving institutions, artists and art historians, curators, collectors in dialogue, we are creating a piece which all of these actors have both a say and something at stake. Writing the record has become everyone's charge. This is our um, collaborators. So the People's Table began in collaboration with Hong An Trung at UNC. It's a community roundtable session is open to everyone. Discussion prompts address issues related to local and national sociopolitical issues. This session cross pollinates discourse among community constituents and fosters productive new relationships to continue the movement for dismantling institutional racism. The People's Table sessions were first conceived in 2014. And in reaction to um, the mediatized deaths of Mike Brown and Eric Garner, among other unarmed black men and women, as well as non indictments of the police assaults. The people's table discussions now intend to catalyze community dialogue around both national and international sociopolitical issues affecting historically disenfranchised populations. The people table people's table hopes to make visible the divisions and connections that exist within our community, while also activating new productive relationships that continue the movement to dismantle institutional racism. As the past few years have seen the most public critical dialogue of these issues the country has ever seen, BLT becomes a critical platform for exchange. There's a palpable thirst for reform People want to do something to say something. And because of the proliferation of oral history projects, the public is familiar with this format that is produced for and by the people. Our archive will ultimately house all black lunch table con related content and aggregate other online projects. The oral history archive that we are building was begun at UNC in collaboration with folks at the Digital Innovation Lab. BlackLunchTable.com is a live archive expanding infinitely as we continue to add new data from roundtable events. We see the creation of this database as an act of radical archiving, inspiring political and so so social reform through documenting histories that are currently underrecognized. Currently, the beta version of BlackLunchTable.com houses a sample set of recorded, transcribed, and meta tagged dialogues from a dozen BLT roundtable events. The database is searchable by a variety of terms, including participant, institution, location, date, discussion topics. Here, a visualization of the various topics tagged and discussions mapped to each other. The size of each dot, this way, the size of each dot uh, affects, reflects how often these topics appear. It's possible to see on the right side here, uh, which discussions those issues appeared in, select one and listen to it. In the next version, it will also be possible to search within transcripts for specific words and follow the text along with audio. We've also been discussing with our team how to media, metadata tags might interconnect with other database categories. For example, that in some cases of Library of Congress ID does not exist for a term, our system will be significant in defining those terms. We're not simply contributing content to historical record, but redefining how the history is organized, how it's told, and who authors that history. Now, finally, 
Wikipedia. Wikipedia is an open source platform wherein anyone has an equal voice by writing and editing historical records. Recent studies show that 91 about 91% of Wikipedia's editors are men and 77% are white. This is why we edit Wiki. We're actively cultivating a more diverse editorship in addition to encouraging editors in the majority demographic to focus on marginalized or omitted subject matter. Our editathons mobilize the creation and improvement of Wikipedia articles that pertain to the lives and works of notable Black visual artists. At each editathon, we provide a list of suggested artists, um, particularly fo focusing on Black artists who have worked within or local to the host institution's community and are currently underdocumented. So I'm going to switch a little bit here. This is a picture of our Wikipedia meetup page where I will uh, be showing you the collection of artists that we have pulled together from all of the places that we've been. Um, we've been able to uh, research but artists are under, under documented every place that we go. We're a nomadic um, organization. So we might go to Sheboygan, Wisconsin, research what artists are missing from the archive there. If they don't have a Wikipedia page, they will appear in red. If they do, they appear blue. Um, and we have put together a list, uh, a growing list of over 1,100 artists. We also have a photography initiative. Wikipedia, the encyclopedia is only one platform of the Wikimedia movement. Wikicommons is a repository for photography, video, and sound. And this is the source of all the images on Wikipedia. So you will notice that there are a lot of articles that are underdocumented and missing photography. This is a way that we also try to fill Wikipedia with records of Black visual artists. So um, these are some of the things we do now and are planning to do in the future. What I wanted to get to is editing with you guys. So I'm going to switch to a browser. Now I'm hoping that you guys can follow along with me. Um, and if you lose me, that's fine. We will be able to um, have this recorded and you can reference it later if I lose you. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is ask you guys to create a login. So if I am logged in, um, you can create an account right here. When you create an account, you'll be asked for a username and a password. I do recommend that you include the optional email address. It's not gonna spam you. It's just a good way to recover um, your password if you miss it. So then you can log in. Once you log in, Um, you'll probably find that your name on the top in the middle here is red. And that means, as I said earlier, that there's no information attached to that. So it's a red link. What we're going to try to do first is turn that red link blue. Mine is blue because I've already done this before, but you will click on your username on the top. And your screen won't look like this. It'll probably be blank and ask you to create a new user. So it might look some similar to this, but with a white box. Um, so you'll go ahead and click on create user, and then it will be followed by your username. And in the blank box below, 
you'll write something like, hello, I'm a new editor. Editing with Rutgers alumni today. So this is one of the two spaces that you'll have um, charge over and can come back in and edit as you wish. Um, it's your page. It's kind of like a, a profile page, let's say. Um, I'm not going to save this. Well, first, you would go down here to the bottom of the page. Edit summary is kind of what it sounds like. This is a summary of your edit. So you can say start a new user page and then publish your changes. When you hit publish, When you hit publish, you will see whatever you ended up writing here under your username. It will be a lot shorter than this one, but it will be personalized. And then hopefully you'll see that your name has turned blue. Next to your name, I'm gonna just walk you through the navigation here. Next to your name is an alert. Um, the alert gives you notifications across from Wikipedia platforms as to who has notified you or talk, given you a message on your talk page or message, mentioned you in a comment. All of these things can be checked um, by clicking on them. The next is your inbox on Wikipedia. And basically this is what we call a talk page. Um, this talk page will um, be linked. This is uh, another no notification box like an email box, but the talk page here is the same as this talk page behind your username. Um, and this is basically your inbox. Now, one of the things that we always say is that Wikipedia is public and open source. So um, everything can be used, edited and distributed by anyone. And so anyone can come and see my inbox um, and sandbox is basically a sketchbook or a notepad um, you can use this to draft new pages or to make notes for yourself my sandbox is empty right now but i could for example copy a page paste it in edit it and then maybe use that to see how things um, work on Wikipedia. So if I'm gonna say something like, this is a test, and I'm gonna maybe make a link and see how links work. There's a link here. I'm gonna link that to um, let's say Mary Baraka. And then if I publish this, testing, publish changes, I see this is live. Now the sandbox and the user page is are mine. So people are not going to judge that. It doesn't have to be an article in the same way that the live pages and articles of Wikipedia are. And that's, um, that's why this, if I clicked on it, it would, bring me to the Mary Baraka's page. Um, but that's where I can test things out. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this and delete it. Publish changes. What are you doing? So next to sandbox is preferences. Um, you can click on that and click on editing. I used to usually recommend scrolling down to edit mode and making sure you have show me both editor tabs selected and then saving. Um, that way you don't have to edit in wiki code. You can edit in a visual editor that's much more like WordPress. Um, 
Some of the other things you can play around with here are gadgets. Um, I'm going to scroll through the ones that I have marked, and you're welcome to come back and mark these for yours if you'd like. Um, I would say that they're not necessary, but they can be really useful as you begin to edit. And then, of course, click Save when you're finished. Next, the preferences is beta. That's where they build tools for Wikipedia. We're going to go ahead and skip that for now. Next to beta is watch list. Watch list is something that when I edit, I'm prompted to watch a page. Um, I can elect to watch any page on Wikipedia. I usually just watch pages that I've edited because basically you can see them develop. I can see that this page, Peggy Cooper Caffritz, that I worked on ages ago and started to watch was edited by this person. And who had probably repaired this link. Um, so it's a nice way to keep track of what you're editing. I can click on contributions, which ne is next to watch list. And this will show you all of the work that I've done on Wikipedia, like ever. <laughs> um, and it also, because it's open source, I can kind of look at what other people have done. So I know Gina's username. Um, so I can see what she's done lately. Search. She edited June 2nd, it looks like, Fred Moon's article. So again, open source platform. Um, the next thing I want everybody to do is navigate to our uh, meetup page. And this is useful to just know in the future. Um, it will also be forwarded to you as a link um, after the, this webinar. Uh, the way you can find it in the search bar is WP colon black lunch table. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you'll see this Wikipedia meetup page. Um, I'm going to show you all of these tabs are always updated and they're going to be a good resource for you going forward. Um, it will land a little bit on a page that tells you a little bit about our project. Um, there's an event archive where we put links to events that we have done in the past. And that can also be useful. The link for the project we're working on today will be here if you wanna come back and look at it. Join Us has um, all of the upcoming events. We're doing obviously online events right now. This weekend, we're going to do an all Spanish language Wikipedia edit a um, And we have various things going on um, throughout the rest of the fall. And then we also have meetups um, online. And you're welcome to add your username to our editors and keep in touch. So there's an email address and everything is on the join us tab. Now we're talking about gaps in the art historical record and finding those. Um, so when we have an event at a site, we research, you know, who is an artist in that area. And granted, I did want to pin that you can edit whoever you want today. Um, I think that it's important that we just think about who's left out. You know, there might be thousands and thousands of edit articles about Pokemon, but maybe not so many on artists and let alone black artists. So, I'm looking at um, suggestions that people have had where we will add these people to our list going forward. Um, and the main list where they have been processed through, um, like are making sure they're logged into Wikidata. Um, all of the red links don't have articles, the blue links do, but they need some work. So I'm scrolling down. You know, everywhere we go, we do the research on who is in that area and who might need a wiki article or has one that needs some work. Um, and it's over 1100 people long right now, which is great. Not great, but it's great that we're trying to keep track of them. Um, next to that is our resource page, which is going to be really useful for you um, also in the future. And I wanted to share um, a couple of things here too. So if you have five minutes or hours, where do I start with editing Wikipedia suggestions? Um, 
there's videos, training, note tutorials, um, ways to evaluate articles, what to do with photos when you um, find a photo or take a photo of an artist that you want to put it up or of anyone that you want to put up on Wikipedia. Um, little things. And then our main page normally has the events happening right now. And one of the events that we are doing all month uh, now that we're sheltered in place mostly is bingo. So we are offering prizes for people who edit um, Wikipedia articles on this bingo card. Um, so you can check back there to participate. Um, what I want to do is, let's see. It's pulled up. It's not pulled up. First, I'm going to actually. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is get you guys to go to this page. So um, I'm wondering maybe I can share this in the chat. Um, this is the meetup page for today, and this is the link that you'll be sent later. Um, it basically says a little bit about us, and it also has guidelines. Where is my Yes, event agenda. So this is one of the things that I wanted to walk through with you quickly before we start editing. I'm not going to um, go into presentation mode right now. I'm just going to kind of quickly run through this and you'll have access to this stuff too. So as we talked about, um, Wikipedia is an encyclopedia, of course. There's, it's one of the most referenced sites globally, probably the top five, I believe. And there's um, over 50 million articles in English, but there's also more than 290 languages that are not translated. So if you are multilingual, that's actually a really great service you can do is translate or interpret a page into a different language. Wikipedia. Um, there are five pillars of Wikipedia. One is it's an encyclopedia, obviously, but that also is like thinking about the language um, that we use in Wikipedia. Uh, two is that it's written, written from a neutral point of view. So it can't be, you can't write something like this beautiful flower. It needs to be neutral. So you have to say something like this blue flower with five petals. Um, Wikipedia is free content that anyone can use, edit, and distribute. So that being said, you can't copy a paragraph from an article that you find because that's copyrighted material. You have to read it, synthesize it, and write your own interpretation of that um, material. And then be open to letting it go. So the next person that comes along and edits that article might change the work that you do. Um, and they also might quote, quote the work that you do on Wikipedia in a press article because it's free and open content. Four editors cho should, cho should treat each other with respect and civility. Um, we think that, that goes without saying, but as we all have probably um, even more exposure to harassment and the dangers of online communities. Um, Wikipedia has checks and balances in order to manage that and um, arbitration committees and things like that to keep us safe. Number five is Wikipedia has no firm rules. So even though we think of these as rules, because you and I are now editors, 
um, and it's an open source, you know, platform, we are the ones that are making the rules and they're constantly evolving and including more voices. And that's why it's important for you to be part of the community too. There are three core content policies. Uh, the neutral point of view, I talked about a little bit. Uh, verifiability is another one. So everything on Wikipedia must have a citation. Um, and that verifiability should be, uh, we'll probably talk about a little bit later, but um, you should be able to, basically a reader should be able to click on something, go to that source and understand, you know, how that information was synthesized. Um, the number three is no original research. So basically it's no primary source material um, right now. It needs to be edited or mediated. So basically no blogs, no press releases, things like that um, are not considered uh, source, uh, you know, uh, good sources for Wikipedia articles. Um, that being said, I will talk a little bit about that more later. <laughs> um, so no conflict of interest on Wikipedia. That means when we get artists coming to our events saying, okay, I'm ready to write my Wikipedia article, um, they actually can't do that. Uh, we need to keep the encyclopedia neutral, right? And that include that makes it necessary for there to be no conflicts of interest, no family or friends editing each other. Um, no one you're financially connected to right now. Um, so if I always, I always recommend, you know, host a meetup yourself. If you need an article and you're notable, um, sometimes I invite a bunch of people that don't know each other. They bring their information and swap in the living room. So, you know, so-and-so person A writes for person B and person B writes for person A. They don't know each other. It's neutral and they're notable. Um, if you do find errors on pages that you know aren't incorrect, that talk page that we saw on our logins are behind every article on Wikipedia. And that's a good place to have a discussion about changes and ask for other editors that are neutral to make those changes. Um, so we talked a little about reliable sources. So published um, academic peer reviewed publications are great, university textbooks. Respected publishing houses, magazines, journals, and mainstream newspapers. Um, this becomes an issue when media doesn't cover marginal uh, people that are notable in their communities. And that's a part of the project um, that we're working on is figuring out how to really document the sum of all human knowledge in Wikipedia, which is their goal. But they don't want to duplicate the same systematic biases that are happening in the media and in our our general society, then we have to figure out how to do this a little differently. Um, right now, we are kind of working within the system to try to push on the boundaries. So when I find somebody who I know is notable, um, let's say, you know, um, Dr. Charles Smith is, a, is someone who I edited and I knew how locally famous he was and how many no local articles he had. Um, those were not reliable sources according to Wikipedia. Um, but, you know, I just, I sat down and did some digging and I came up with, you know, a very long list, like 20 articles, maybe a couple of them were more mainstream newspapers and books. But I feel like, you know, if you are proving to these, to the people who, like the other editors that are, trying to like review these articles, that this person is notable, then I think it's worth trying to edit these, um, the people who don't have these um, reliable sources, quote unquote. And that kind of brings us to this idea of notability on Wikipedia. So it changes depending on what field you're editing in a biography, uh, what notability is. And of course, I specialize in visual arts. And so that's what I know about one of the things that I've been told is that basically artists on Wikipedia should have a um, at least, I think, three solo museum shows, uh, five, you know, notable articles 
and um, be in a, a spattering of public collections. And um, that to me leaves out performance artists, land artists, like a lot of people who are notable in the art world and even outside of the art world. And so we try to come up with an equivalency. Basically what I'm hearing them say is that they want mid-career artists or more advanced. So I'm not going to add someone who just graduated from grad school. I'm not gonna add someone who doesn't have enough coverage, significant coverage. I'm gonna to try to let them develop their career before they're in um, Wikipedia at this point. That does not preclude me from um, or prevent me from adding their name to our list, our meetup list, because we want to keep track of them in five years, they'll still be on the list and maybe they'll have enough coverage in order to get a Wikipedia article. So I think another thing that we always say is be bold. So if you're not really sure if someone is notable enough to create an article for, um, I say, risk it, you know, ask people, ask us to review, you know, um, we're here to help um, and we can help you judge whether it's somebody who we think would stick and if it's worth like putting the time into doing that or if maybe we need to like look for different sources, more sources. Um, yeah, again, I said every action is stored before. It's true, you might wanna think about that when you write your, you choose your username, um, it's public. Uh, so every period and deletion and addition is tracked and connected to your username. Um, that's great because then you can actually undo any mistakes you made, so do be bold. I'm gonna just skip a little bit I think, uh, you know, there's ways to resolve disputes um, and get help on Wikipedia. If you Google Wikipedia Tea House or link to it from our page, there are people up all hours of the day and night from all over the world helping new editors um, with questions. So that's a great use resource. And, and you can also email us, of course, and we'd love to help um, guide you in your new edits. Be aware, of course, of the open source policy. Um, not only writing is open source, but imagery as well. Um, so you can't just Google an image of an artist and add it to Wikipedia because that, that image that you find on Google is likely licensed by the photographer. If you are the photographer, you can definitely upload that to Wikipedia and donate the license to open source. Um, you can look for open licensed images uh, by restricting your licensing search on Wikipedia, I mean on Google, but um, it's best to, uh, you know, look really deeply at that. And of course, if you're at a lecture and you notice somebody doesn't have a Wikipedia image, you can snap a picture of your own and upload that as long as it's in a public space. Um, and we can walk, I'm, we're happy to teach you how to walk through that too. So, going back to our meetup page that should be still in the chat, I just wanted to show you a couple of things. I would love for you guys to sign up here. If you push this blue button and then just save this automatically, this four tildes will automatically change into your signature date and time when you publish changes. So I'm gonna push publish. And then on the very, very bottom of this page, I just showed up. So if you sign in here, sign up, sign in, um, at any point, honestly, um, we can help you and communicate with you um, on Wikipedia and we can also show um, the Wikimedia Foundation that there is interest in our project. So please do push that button. Um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is that in after about midpoint here, there are some suggested possible articles to edit that we pulled together just for Rutgers alumni. Um, the first section is kind of hand-pulled artic uh, articles about 
artists from the Black Diaspora who were our Rutgers alumni. And then um, I have a link here that links to a list of artists from New Jersey in general that are on our scope list. And then down here are um, notable alumni and faculty from Rutgers in general, not artists necessarily. So many of you might have different interests. This is a great place to start. Um, these query lists in the tables are always people who have, um, uh, we have on our, or usually people we have on our list in Wiki, and they're always people in Wikidata. So again, if they have blue names here, links, this links to an actual article that you can edit. And I always recommend that you edit a few articles first before trying to write a brand new article. That not only gets you practiced, but it also shows the Wikipedia people who might be judging our articles. Um, it shows them that you want to be part of this community and learn and, and um, that you're not just popping in for one reason and leaving. So the last thing I wanted to do is show you a few good articles very quickly and then I'll let questions happen. Sorry. Um, so this is a great article, it has a picture, an info box, lots of writing, narrative writing, no lists, right? Lots and lots of writing. Uh, Paul Robeson. This is another one, Mary Baraka. It's pretty good, but a pretty good article. Um, a little less writing, but it sells info box, photo, etc. This one you can see immediately. There's no photo. A lot less writing. Look at that. This one could use some expansion. There's only five re references or citations, um, but there's still some categories. Categories link to lists and help stabilize the page. This one, no info box, no organization. A lot of work could be done on this. And this one, probably the worst, although there are categories that are organizing page. There's no info box and literally it's like four sentences long with two references. So this is also a good one to research and write on. When you are researching and you find an article, you can click edit. Go ahead and write your sentence and then copy the URL of the article that you wrote it, or you can do it by hand, but then I'm gonna click cite. I'm gonna paste in that URL, or I can manually enter in the information from a book, and then I will click publish, and it will automatically organize this citation link and put the reference in the bottom. So that automatic generator is really handy in the edit mode. The other thing I wanted to show you is edit. We did this before. When you highlight something, let's say Northwestern University, and then I'm gonna use this link icon. And then here is the suggestion. I'm gonna take that suggestion, click on it. And then I'm gonna publish my changes again. And I'm gonna describe it, link, publish changes. And there you go. Now this links to my question. So that is all. I know I went a little bit longer than I expected, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have for me. Thank you. That was great. Um, we're getting feedback in the chat saying just how appreciative people are for the great work that you're doing. So okay. this is awesome. Thank you so much. Um, we have time for one or two questions. So the first one that we got was, have you found that Wikipedia has censored and or deleted anything that you've added or edited? Absolutely. It's not Wikipedia, though. It's important to note that it's other users like you and me. So that's what's kind of bananas, is that somebody out there in the world is judging that my edit is wrong. So sometimes they're right and sometimes they're wrong. And when I find that they've unfairly deleted something or flagged something for deletion, that's when in person communities like black lunch table or like wiki NYC other editors are going to come to your aid. So we end up just kind of like. 
ganging up the arbitration and like writing why this edit needs to stay. And that's what they are. Nothing is automatically deleted. They're flagged for deletion and then people vote on it. People like you. So it's important to just kind of be part of the community in that way. Other times, maybe it does need more work or maybe it is kind of out of um, the lane and it needs something different, but I'm constantly learning. It's not something we learn overnight. It's something we learn with practice. So I encourage you to join our edit-a-thons to try to make it make more sense. <laughs> Great, actually you're, you, you led in uh, right into the last question that I have here, which is the edit-a-thon. So um, our, our attendee says, you mentioned that you're hosting online events. Of course, we can't have in-person events right now, but what did those look like when you were able to host them? In-person events, um, just take out this virtual realm. Like we would, like with the Wikipedia edit-a-thons, we would sit around tables and um, I would give the little onboarding, but then we'd just come around and edit together. Um, and I think it really helps to have people around because when you have like that quick little question, you just need an answer to it. It ends up for me, it ends up being a stopping point normally, but if I'm with other people and I can ask questions and I keep going. Um, so that kind of is mimicked online too. Um, and then I think in the beginning of the lecture, I, I talked a little bit about what our online events look like as far as um, the round table discussions. And do these happen all around the country? Because you said that yeah, they do. You guys are represented everywhere. Yeah, we have um, representatives in Nigeria. And wow. uh, right now, I feel like that's the only one off of the states right now. We have kind of one that's back and forth to Trinidad, Tobago, and LA. Um, my collaborator, Gina, is based in Chicago. I'm in Brooklyn. Uh, Eliza, who's in the chat, is in um chicago and uh we have another person in atlanta it's like yeah we're all over the place and we always have been so this has been a kind of like um welcome to our world <laughs> that's very true you guys were yeah. ahead of the curve huh <laughs> yeah and when, whenever we have like an artist residency or something like that in different places we'll kind of bring the project um and use it as an opportunity to kind of you know do an edit on there. Well, it's great. That's awesome. I'm going to echo what uh, some of our attendees are saying, which is you guys are doing really important, great work, and it's really cool to hear about it right now. Um, on behalf of the RUAA, I want to thank you, Heather, and also Wanda um, and Eliza for being on today and doing this great presentation. Um, it's going to be available, as I said, on the RUAA YouTube channel, and you'll receive a follow up email with that link as well as links to more information about the Black Lunch Table Project. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody.